hi what do you see and just stop right there and think for a moment what do you see what you see becomes your reality, isn't it i'm going to challenge you today to see something else if you are born of christ i'm going to challenge you to see something else i remember going going out to a fan fair and going on this ride that he places um the 3d a virtual reality glasses on you and then you go on the ride this ride is a very very simple ride with all with with very no danger around at all it's not one of those scary ones but then the the virtual reality glasses that you wear it brings pictures you you see something different you see yourself hanging very high up above you see animals coming out to get you. You see the city, you see yourself. Sometimes shit as though you're going to fall down. And I remember screaming out loud because of what I see. I was screaming with all of my strength. Then I said, wait a minute. I saw the way this ride is. Why am I screaming? Why am I scared? This is a virtual reality. And then it dawned on me, my mind had captured what I was seeing. My mind had bought into words and that was my reality. So what they call it virtual reality. It really becomes your reality. What you see is so real and your emotions begin to react to it. Your fear, you begin to fear as though it's happening for real. And when I stopped and I started saying, this is not real. This is not real. This is not real. I started telling myself, this is not real. This is not real. This is not real. I'm not going to be afraid. This is not real. And I, I kind of started to settle down. My mind started receiving that this is not real. And I started seeing the reality outside, my virtual reality. I was seeing the reality that this is just a simple ride. So I've come to ask you today, what do you really see? Do you see fear? That is your reality, fear. But when the Lord has told you that I have not given you a spirit of fear, you choose to see fear. I'm telling you to see something different, to see from the word of God. I'm telling you to see from 2 Timothy 1, 7, that I have not given you a spirit of fear but of power of love and of sound mind what do you see do you see anxiety are you anxious god has not given a spirit of fear he said be anxious for nothing philippians 4 6 be anxious for nothing choose to see the word believe what god has spoken over you let that become your reality how do you fight a battle is to see, see what the Lord has spoken over you. See the word of God and begin to speak over yourself. No, I'm not going to receive that fear. For God has not spoken fear over me. For God has not given me a spirit of fear. Therefore, I'm not, I'm not going to accept it. I'm not afraid. What I choose to see is the Lord on my right hand side. Because the, David said, I see the Lord on my right hand. So I'm not afraid. So I choose to see the Lord on my right hand. So I'm not afraid. I choose not to hate this person because the Lord has not given a spirit of hatred but of love. So I will begin to concentrate or begin to concentrate on the love that God has placed in your heart and let the love bubble up inside of you. It's hard, but it's possible. It's all in your mind. It's all, it's all in your mind and it's on your what you believe and what you see, what becomes your truth. So as you concentrate on the negative, that becomes your truth. But as you concentrate and feed on the positive, feed on the word of God so that the word can begin to minister to you when the enemy tries to come up against you in your mind. What do you see? Especially about healing. God, Jesus has taken up our pain. Isaiah 53 verse 3. What is it verse 3? I mean, we forgot, but I know it's in Isaiah 53. He said, for God, I think Isaiah 53 verse 5. So he has taken our pain. He has borne our pain. He's taken away our suffering. On the cross, by his stripes, we have been healed. Somebody took away your pain. Somebody thought about you over 2,000 years ago and, and took the stripes and bore your pain. Took it all away. That today, you may be free of sicknesses. When he took care of sin, he took care of sicknesses. So if you believe that when you come to Christ, your sins are forgiven, if you believe that when you pray to God to forgive, he forgives you, why cannot you believe that when you ask God to heal me, or when you place your hand on somebody to say that he'll be healed in Jesus' name, that healing will not come? 
Why are you going around chasing, looking for someone to place their hand on you when the salvation, when Jesus dealt with sin and sickness for you too, for you. So you can begin to speak to yourself that I am healed. I refuse to see the sickness that is I, that has been declared upon me. So you see the medical report. It is fact. It's real. The doctors are doing yeah, the, the, the right job by telling you what is happening. I'm not saying ignore entirely what is happening. It's good that you go to the hospital and see what is happening. Then that is your prayer point. Then you begin to speak to that sickness that I'm not receiving you. No, I'm not receiving you cancer. I'm not receiving you arthritis. I'm not receiving you HIV. I am not receiving you. But I am worth it. Jesus paid for me. I am worth it. I am worth Every every healing he got for me. The enemy will try to come to your mind and say that, that no, that's not true. Remember your son the other day. Remember what you did. Remember because of your father's sins. Remember because of that, that. But I, I am not receiving it because he's paid it for me. I don't care what has happened in the past. I don't care what my parents did or what, what my forefathers did. What I do know, what my truth is that Jesus has brought me total healing that is what i believe what god has spoken concerning me about healing is what i receive do not receive anything god has not spoken over you do not no matter how hard the facts are the hard facts but the truth is in the word and that is your truth as a child of god as a citizen of heaven in heaven, there is no sickness. In the books of God, there is no sickness. No, do not let anybody tell you that there's a will of God for you to be sick because of some sort of punishment. Listen, if you have a child and the child has even gone to do something wrong and they broke their leg, would you let the leg rot because the child is stubborn? You won't. God is not that wicked. He's a good God. He's a best. Even you, a parent on the earth, you can do this for your child. You think the good, good father, who, who goodness is, is, is in his name. He cannot forgive you and bring healing to your body. He paid it already. Yours is to receive. Now I challenge you to go out there and take the word of God and receive it. Speak it over your life. Don't let the enemy come to your mind with all sorts of things that, you're not, that God has not spoken over you. Reject it and take that which God has spoken over you and receive it into your life. Your words are forming you. Your words are forming your future. The enemy is putting evil thoughts, anxiety in your mind and making you confess evil over yourself so that it can come to pass. No, no, no. Challenge yourself to think differently and begin to speak positive. As you put the negative, begin to tell yourself that no. Even though I do not see these financial calculations falling into place, I do know that here by this time so I will own my that house. That is my mind, mind as a child of God. Everything was, 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 was gotten for me on the cross of Calvary when the reconciliation came through Jesus. Everything God intended in the original plan has come to me. And I'm not going to live this earth believing in Christ Jesus and leaving any of those benefits out. I am going to walk through it and get all of them. Go out there. Beat and the devil. Get that which belongs to you. Beat him for he has been defeated. Trample underfoot. Those thoughts, he's just a liar. He's the number one liar. The father of all lies. The father of all lies. It's all lies. Let the word of God be your truth. Let the word of God be your truth. Believe that. And you shall see the changes come to you. Especially if you choose to believe in Christ Jesus. Oh, the attacks will come. Trust me. The attacks will come left, right, center. But yours is to stand and declare that which God has declared over you. And you see him disappear. You see, he's afraid of the words of God. He knows the word of God is, is alive and active. He will melt away. Those thoughts will melt away because of the word of God. That you are speaking over yourself. He cannot bear the sound of the word of God. Get to know it that you can speak it over yourself. That you can use it as a weapon against the enemy when he comes against you in all forms. Go out there. And be what God has intended you to be. Do not live a mediocre Christian life. Do not live a substandard Christian life. Do not live a defeated Christian life. Go out there and live a victorious Christian life. Victorious follower of Jesus Christ. That is who you are. God bless you.